coming. You. Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Diva Diaries. I am your host Sojo Bolts and I am here with one of the most talented female wrestlers on the planet, uh, Mercedes Martinez. Aw, thank you. Aw, thank you for coming. No problem. Um, actually, you were always on my list of people to interview. <laughs> <laughs> there was supposed to be another host and we were kind of supposed to like go back and forth. <laughs> like, okay, I'll get those and you get those. Well, I am now the only host of the Diva Diaries. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I can get to, I'm gonna snatch that one up now. Okay. <laughs> might as well. Yeah, heck yeah. I was like, yeah, that one's kind of important. We better go ahead and get that one up now. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So um, basically, um, let me go ahead and, I, this is what I call my mark out moment. Lovely. I get that out of the way really quick, <laughs> and then we go back into the interview. I'm marking out from Mercedes. Oh, yes, uh, mark out from Mercedes. Yeah, right. um, because, mm -hmm. I mean, I've done a few interviews now, and I'm, mostly I've talked to girls who I've seen their careers start, and I was there, and, you know, watch them as they grow into their own, and they grow up. You were around before I was around. But um, for, for me, pivotally, like one of your matches kind of changed my, my view on women's wrestling. Um, everybody knows that you're an amazing wrestler, but I was in the audience at the very first Shimmer taping. Oh. Yes, girl. And um, <laughs> your match with Sarah Del Rey moved me. Like, wrestling should move you. I watched that and was completely blown away. Um, I never, I don't know that I've ever talked to you about it, but yeah. I actually had to get out of my chair after the show and I had to go backstage. I had to find you guys and let you know. And right when I got to the door of the backstage, the door opened and Sarah was standing there and I went, oh, hi. <laughs> um, and I'm like, I just wanted to tell you that I really, really liked your match. Like, I think that if there were women wrestlers around like you, where I'm from, I would be a different wrestler today. <laughs> and she's like, oh, thank you, that's so sweet. I'm like, I need a drink, I gotta go, I'm sorry. So I never made it back to tell you. Uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> but here we are many years later, and now many, I'm telling you now. Oh. So oh, thank you for that, actually. I that was doing my was... job. <laughs> Girl, you do your job. You do really, really well. I was doing what I love to do. Girl, you could tell, <laughs> you could tell. Because that was actually, it was a really inspirational moment. But we will get to that later. We'll get, we'll get to Shimmer later. Because there's so much more uh, before oh, we man. get to talk about that. And there is. Girl, if, I, I got some notes here. Okay? Oh, man. But before we talk Jump about away. wrestling, let's just start at the very beginning. A young Mercedes. Oh, no Mercedes. Where are you from? I am from Waterbury, Connecticut. Okay. Uh, it's a very small town that no one really knows of. <laughs> How many people? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's gangster. Oh, really? <laughs> it's the ghetto. Okay. Okay. Uh, not a lot of people go to college or anything like that, but I'm one of the few. <laughs> Good job. Good and job. made it made it out of Connecticut and trying to put my little. Uh, Ghetto town on the map. <laughs> that you have, girl. Because actually, I've never heard of that. Uh, heard of that uh, exactly. Town, but... See, you kind of just pass by it yeah. on your way to like Stanford and Greenwich. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's, and who knew that Connecticut had a ghetto? I guess there's a ghetto. There's a ghetto everywhere. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm ghetto or anything. No, no, no. High class ghetto. Right, right. <laughs> not, not even bougie. Just no, high no. class. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a such thing. Okay. So, duh, what kind of family do you come from? A big family, small family? A very big family. Yeah. Uh, my mother's one of nine. My father's one of nine. I am one of four, but I have stepbrothers and stepsisters, so probably like a one of ten. <laughs> if you add everybody together. Okay. So I'm somewhere in the middle. Okay. <laughs> and like, so here you are, many, many siblings, big family. Uh, I gotta ask, was wrestling ever a part of your life growing up? Did you watch it as a child? Did your family watch it? Yeah, yeah, we uh, we were a big wrestling family. Uh, I used, when I was small, we used to do a lot of uh, backyarding. <laughs> really? In the parks and stuff okay. and, and you know I was a very big tomboy um I had uh, a lot of uh, two older brothers before me <coughs> excuse me I'm sorry I'm tired I'm a exhausted today but um yeah I, I'm, I'm, I'm a tomboy okay. so uh we did a lot of backyard wrestling doing a lot of stuff in the the front yard backyard in the park and all that good stuff uh couches bed <laughs> anything you can name uh <laughs> 
I was very athletic. I liked sports mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So wrestling was just part of the thing that you did when you were young. Okay. It wasn't something I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. It just kind of something that just fell okay. in my lap. So you guys watched it? Oh, yeah. Do you remember some of your favorite performers from back then? Um, back then, it was Hulk Hogan, of course, mm -hmm. Big Boss Man, Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man. Mm -hmm. um, I did watch Moolah and Mae Young. Uh, my uncle actually was a very big fan of, uh, what was it, uh, Glow Wrestling. Wow. Who wasn't a fan of Glow Wrestling? Okay. <laughs> I loved Glow. Um, I was a big fan of it, but um, I wasn't a big fan of women's wrestling. I wanted to do what the guys did. Mm -hmm. So, women's wrestling was kind of, eh. It was more of the character and the big hair and all that stuff. I wanted to do what the guys did. Yeah. I wanted to be more athletic. Yeah. I got you. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I think you succeeded. Uh, okay. So, we, you, know, you know, moving into being a teenager and going to school, you were very athletic. Mm -hmm. And going to college, you actually went to college on an athletic scholarship. Yes, I did. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so, basketball? Basketball was my thing. Good for you. <laughs> good for you. I'll pay the way for college for a little while. Good. <laughs> good, good, good. They tried to make me play basketball as a kid, but I'm 5'3". So, it doesn't matter. Girl. No. No, I was born to cheerlead. I was born to lead. Back. I did cheerleading before I did. Did you really? Yeah, it, not cheerleading for like football or anything. More of the competitive dance cheerleading. Okay. okay. But we'll keep that in the past. That's okay. <laughs> no, we don't have to talk about that. No. We don't have to talk about that. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in college. Uh, you you're you're on athletic scholarship. You're living the dream. You're playing basketball. You're going to school. Um, and then something happens and turns it all around for you. Yeah, I got injured. Um, I hurt my back pretty bad. Really? Um, a teammate actually took me out. Really? It was one of those things you try to make the spot and uh, you fight for it. And a teammate just kind of hit me in the back. Kind of <sighs> tore my back up a little bit. So for about three months, I was out of school. <clears throat> out of wrestling. I mean, out of, out of basketball, I should mm -hmm. say. And just kind of on the shelf. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand either that women's basketball is really rough. Uh, yeah, it's really it's, uh, rough. It's a competitive sport. Yeah. It's very competitive, especially if you're trying to make a the starting team. So it's uh, you fight for your spot, and there's a lot of girls. Excuse me, there's a lot of girls fighting for a certain position, and you know, even though you're on a scholarship, you still gotta fight for your position. Absolutely. So Absolutely. taken out, and I was out. <laughs> and you were out. I was okay. done. So, so shut down the drain. <laughs> which is sad. This is really, really sad. But if it hadn't happened, you wouldn't be here right now. Exactly. Uh, I tend to think that things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't get hurt, wrestling would never been in my life. So so at this point, um, this is where you're about to make the turn and wrestling is about to come back into your life full force. How did this happen and, and how did you meet up with your um, new life passion? Um, actually, there was a school that uh, opened up in my uh, hometown from Jason Knight. I don't know if anybody knows who he is. Uh, Jason Knight's from ECW, first television champion for ECW. Uh, he had a school that opened up right in my hometown. He actually is from my hometown. Okay. He lived there and everything. I just kind of went there to kind of look at it and just kind of, you know, look at the shows and all that good stuff. And one thing led to another. I wanted to train to get back in shape for basketball, okay. get back my scholarship. Mm -hmm. And one thing led to another. I loved it. Within a month, I had my first match. <laughs> One month. Yeah, I had no <laughs> athletic background for wrestling. It was kind of one of those things. I took the bumps right, I guess. I ran the ropes right. I was a high flyer at that time. And he was just like, okay, you're ready for a match. A month into it. Wow. So how often were you training? Um, Only at that time about four times a week. That's a lot, um, between Yeah, yeah. That's a lot. Um, my back was still kind of hurting. But I guess the cardio training and stuff like that was a lot different than basketball training. Mm -hmm. So I was able to uh, handle the wrestling aspect of it. So... One thing led to another, and I had my first match in my hometown. That's insane. <laughs> and one. Okay. So how many students were in that training class Probably at that ten. time? Ten people. <laughs> That's not bad. It was That's small. He just yeah. started out maybe two months before I started. Okay. And were there any other women there? One. Really? One. And uh, she was, uh, I think she was the first girl there, and I was the second. Okay. And uh, I wrestled her and did, um, you know, our, our, I guess our feud, um, but it didn't last too long because I wanted to wrestle the guys. <laughs> Girls, I'm not. You know. ah. I wanted to wrestle with guys. <laughs> I wanted to be a you know powerhouse. Yeah. <laughs> and you are, you are, you are a powerhouse. So this girl that you start out with, is she still wrestling this day? I'm not sure. Okay. To yeah, be honest, um, she went by the name of Trinity H. Campbell. Okay. I'm not sure if she's still wrestling or not. I mean, I don't live in Connecticut anymore, mm -hmm. so 
Um, but I know maybe a couple months later, uh, everyone does know the girl that I helped train, uh, Velvet Sky, Talia Madison, whatever you guys want to call her nowadays. She did train in my school. We did work a lot of shows together all around the U.S. Mm -hmm. So uh, she she was trained by Jason Knight as well as I was. Gotcha. So God bless you because you're doing big things, girl. Yeah, girl, big things. Big things. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we love her. I just saw her last week. Oh, uh, she's great. Uh, so uh, Jason is running a school, and he's also running shows. But his own, he has his own company okay. at that time called, uh, I think it was ACW or AP. I can't remember the name of it. Okay. He changes his names for his company, you know, copyright just, issues. Yeah. <laughs> just change the letters around. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so you, you you got your first taste. You're 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 wrestling a little bit. Um, the, what was the first major promotion that brought you in and wanted to do something? Um, NECW okay. out in uh, Boston, Massachusetts, uh, New England, New England yeah. Championship Wrestling. Uh -huh. uh, Sheldon Goldberg was the first one who uh, kind of gave me that big push, and he actually made me wrestle some guys and stuff. And and I stayed with him for a couple of years okay. before. Not that we had a falling out, but I wanted to do different things. He had a different direction. I wanted to travel more and get out of the New England scene and mm -hmm. do stuff down south and whatnot. So, gotcha. uh, but I am very blessed that he uh, he gave me the opportunity to do good things for his company uh -huh. and, and, and start a women's company, I guess, because he was one of the first that started women's promotions yeah uh, he had a women's promotion called uh triple w okay. not sure if anybody remembers it www um, mm -hmm. yep uh nikki rocks was there april hunter a lot of the girls that you now know started in triple w okay. so okay. big women's promotion at that time okay so you're getting your experience you're getting your feet wet um Mm -hmm. But you know, you, I know you want to wrestle dudes. Yeah. Okay. So, are you right at that time? Because there wasn't a lot of companies that were featuring featuring women's wrestling at that time. Um, a lot, you know, just like most wrestler, sorry, wrestling shows. There's only one women's match, and yeah. that's two girls, and there's you know, not a lot of spots, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you said that you wanted to go down south. What does that mean? Um, at that time, I want to say it was the TNA when TNA first started. Okay, Nashville. Uh, Nashville, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I did travel to Nashville with uh, Jason Knight. I did travel down with uh, Riptide, a.k.a. Prodigy from ECW. Angel Orsini. We love Angel. Yes, yes. Uh, she actually helped uh, me get my feet wet in a lot of promotions down okay. there. Um, but obviously TNA at that time didn't need me, didn't want me. Whatever was the case, but I did was able to see how a big promotion uh, started with TV and, and, and all that good stuff. So it, it was a good um, eye opener. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't stay down south very long. Okay. I came back up north okay. and did my thing up north. You didn't like it down there? Or? Um, it was different. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, when you're from a city and, and from, you know, a big uh, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey type where, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not a territorial thing. It's more of you're just wrestling in, in your hometown, I guess you can home base thing it was a lot different yeah so there was just I, I'm not sure if I liked it at that time okay, okay. <laughs> I wanted to be close to where I knew everybody and I can wrestle every weekend mm -hmm. whereas in Nashville and t TNA at that time you kind of had to earn your spot mm -hmm. absolutely so, say what gets stayed girl <laughs> stayed. things happen yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wrestle a lot in Nashville and in, in that area and there is literally wrestling every day of the week there Every single day of the week, there is wrestling <laughs> on Sunday right after church. There is wrestling Monday oh, night. Wow. Oh, there is wrestling every day somewhere in that area. Um, I'm not saying the wrestling's good, <laughs> but there is always wrestling going on in that area. And actually, that whole early rise of TNA, like so many girls were rushing down there. Yeah. Oh man, everybody was running down. I'm like, where are you guys? Oh, we're going to Nashville. We're gonna go check out this new this new yeah. thing going on. I'm like. Oh, not ready. I didn't like the driving. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like the driving. I'd rather just drive two or three hours from my home. I mean, you know, real life takes priority sometimes. Absolutely. And, you know, wrestling, I, I didn't think of it as a career. At that time, I thought of it as just a hobby. Um, it took me to places. I, I love what it, you know, it, the athleticism and, and the stuff that I love to do, I, I did it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think of it as, as a career. I still don't think of it as a career. I still think of it as something that I love to do and I have the passion to do and it just kind of got put in my blood mm -hmm. at that time when I first started, you know. Yeah. I still love it now, but real life takes priority, mm -hmm. always. And was the dream for you just, I mean, what was your goal at that time? Um, obviously, when you first start, your goal is to get into WWE. Mm -hmm. um, now, that's not my goal. Mm -hmm. It's for the last probably five years, it hasn't been my goal. Mm -hmm. it, my goal is to make sure that women's wrestling is put on the map for its athleticism and 
to showcase that we're just not TNA and the diva aspect. I mean, everyone gets into wrestling for their own reasons. Mm -hmm. I want to start a women's revolution, whereas we can get in the ring and mix it up with the guys and still be as good as the guys, sometimes better than the guys, mm -hmm. and be the main spot and not just a candy match. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to be, when, when I first started, it was more of WWE, no, within three to four years, I scrapped. That was just out of my head. It was, I wanted women's wrestling to be the focus point. It was, instead of, I wanted to be the man's match, the man's match should be the eye candy of a woman's promotion. Mm -hmm. And that was my goal. Mm -hmm. So at that time, when I first started, there was no women's wrestlers. Mm -hmm. I had to wrestle the guys and did tag matches a lot. When the women's company started popping up, mm -hmm. I was obviously one of the more focal points of it, I guess you can say, mm -hmm. which I'm blessed for. You know, I, I think I'm one of the few that started, that helped start the women's revolution in these companies like Shimmer, Shine, WSU, Triple W, uh, PWU, uh, whatever other promotions are out there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to say that I'm one of the first ones who helped start the companies that way and then moved on and helped, you know, build other, other companies. And, and I'm blessed for that. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Uh, one of the first all women shows that I ever saw was WXW's Elite Eight. Yes. Um, I had never seen anything like it before. <laughs> I was like, who are all these people? Oh, wow. Girls from everywhere. What's this? Yes. Lots of fun. And there was a lot of great talent. Um, they were bringing out, pulling in girls from Canada. And it was awesome um, to see all these different people, all these different kinds of gear. There's, I was not, I'm, I'm not into Japanese wrestling. So <laughs> and I know it's good. It's just, it's it's like almost like having a stroke for me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like too many bright lights. <laughs> um, but... Um, WXW was a style that I could follow, yeah. and uh, I, I was really into it. And then I didn't really see a whole lot of women's promotions after that for a while. But then, as you were saying, WWW popped up, and then all this stuff started kind of to, to kind of to fly and flow. And that's like IWA Mid South started doing stuff, mm -hmm. and people started kind of talking about that. And I know that you were a big part. Of that, that, yeah. that, that women's like as you call revolution I call women's wrestling apocalypse <laughs> because <laughs> it has exploded but uh, WXW and then in my eyes I could be wrong which is my eyes the IWA Mid-South startup which eventually became Shimmer it's was became Shimmer, yeah. really integral in that yeah. what was that like because you were one of the first girls that they brought in Right? For IWA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, for IWA, when I first started with IWA, it was uh, Dave Prezak brought me in. Uh, obviously, he's the owner of Shimmer. Um, he brought me in more or less just to kind of, it was called uh, Volcano Girls, mm -hmm. if anybody remembers. It was the first women's show focused on just women's uh, tournament style thing. And, and it was my first time really down south, I guess you can say, uh, like in an actual wrestling setting. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it was uh, an eye opener for a lot of people because you get to bring different girls from different areas of the country and in US maybe yeah it was in the US at that time you had your Lacey your Mickey Knuckles uh, your Daisy Hayes you had girls that are that people don't know I didn't know half of these girls I was just some girl from Connecticut hey coming down you know down to IWA Mid-South and just making a name for myself and that's basically what I did and from there that's when IWA kind of became the focal point for women's wrestling uh, you had girls coming down you always had shows always had you know more than one women's match on the card it was one or two and he would run two times a month at that time so it, IWA helped put women's wrestling on the map because of they praise Zach and because of Ian Ryan because if it wasn't for them there would be no shimmer right um, WXW which I still work for now um, for Alpha Pops is what we call him. Uh, he had the whole concept of the WXW Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. Everyone, uh, he doesn't run that no more, but the Elite Eight was the concept of a tournament style. Get the girls noticed, mm -hmm. and that's what he wanted to do. I mean, you know, at that time, there was no women's wrestling. Um, has in, in, in company style or tournament style, so he wanted to change that as well. And he was he helped put a lot of names on the map as well. Mm -hmm. So those are the two big companies that I, I worked for early in my career that helped me, mm -hmm. I think, and helped a lot of girls. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I love WXW. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I was uh, completely honored to be on one of those Elite Eights, I think 2010. Um, I wrestled Betsy Ruth, and I was uh. so excited because <laughs> I adore her. Uh, but it was so much fun because it, it's very family oriented. Yes. Like everybody is really, really close, which you don't see in a lot of locker rooms. It's not that whole family togetherness. 
and that big pep talk and yeah you know. pops is very family that's why we call them pops mm-hmm. if anyone knows um i'm still with him to this day okay. and i'm still his 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 whole locker room is still family orientated mm-hmm. i still go to his house have the barbecues okay. and I swim in a swimming pool um it, he's he's basically my father away from home and and when you get that close to someone um, they look out for you. Mm-hmm. They they want to make sure that you're reaching your potential as much as you can. If you can't, then they will help you get there. Mm-hmm. And that's what POPS is all about. So if anyone has a chance to get work for WXW, you have to. Whether it's WXWC4, which is in Pennsylvania now, mm-hmm. uh, run by uh, Samu, or in uh, Florida, which is where I work for, mm-hmm. POPS. But uh, WXW is a great place. I love it. Uh, yeah, because they push you to the moon, girl. Uh, you, were yeah. the, you were the women's <laughs> champion four times. And you were also a cruiserweight champion, right? Just a man's yeah. title. Yeah. Take that. Take that. I wasn't a high flyer, though. That's okay. I just beat up their high flyers. <laughs> see, I see. I don't always think cruiser as a flying. I, I, I just kind of always thought that it was one of those intermediate belts. Yeah, it, it gets you to the next level. It's, it's not the heavyweights where you can't. Sometimes the smaller guys can't mix up with the bigger guys because right. it just doesn't match up so they're in a league of their own mm-hmm. and uh i was in a league of my own and i took over the cruiserweight <laughs> <laughs> was that was that an idea that they had for you or was that something that you were um, thinking about it was a combination um i think at that time there was no more women's wrestler for me to wrestle um, I kind of dominated the women's division in WXW. Um, you can only wrestle the same girl so many times. Yeah. I think I wrestled Velvet Sky ongoing for years. <laughs> and it kind of just gets, it's, it stalls. Um, you can't do so many matches because people get bored of it. Mm-hmm. So at that time, while I was champion, it was just throw him, mix her with the guys. It was mm-hmm. the first time that they'd done it. And it had a great reaction. Yeah. And, you know, me wrestling like a, you know, a, what was it, Devin Moore and I can't remember the other guys forgive me <laughs> um it, it just it was more of a less just it it propelled me and got me ready to wrestle guys on a regular basis mm-hmm. whereas before I was wrestling guys just because they had nobody but here is the division that they pushed me to wrestle all these guys and even the heavyweights you know I was part of a, of a stable where I was wrestling in main events with heavyweights mm-hmm. and in got my you know ass beaten <laughs> it was just the way it worked but I didn't mind it because it it made me stronger it prepared me for what can happen if I went overseas because mm-hmm. if anybody knows once you go overseas it's no mercy mm-hmm. you know especially Japan mm-hmm. where I had the you know the luxury of going so I mean title no title I'm just blessed to be and, and happy just to be able to mix it up with guys because mm-hmm. that's what I love to do yeah girl but you're not a small girl you know it's not sure. like no. you know <laughs> no no I mean height wise you're not you're not this tiny little thing and that's not like okay that's not that's not real that's not realism I mean there's no way you're actually you know you're, you're your doctor taller than me I mean I'm not tall but <laughs> <laughs> you know you have a good size to you so you wrestling guys uh, isn't you know, far beyond my imagination, and especially if anybody is, you know, knows your style. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're legit, girl. You're for real. Like, yeah. I would love to see you beat a man's ass. <laughs> I got, I got, I got a list for you. <laughs> Get that list yeah, out before I retire at some point. I need you to do <laughs> so those in there. Right there. <laughs> um, early in your career, you were working for CZW. Now, I think the CZW of today might be a little bit different than the CZW of that time. Yeah. What was that like? Um, it, it was different. Um, I, I, I won't say I loved it. I say I like it. It, it helped me um, get my feet wet in Pennsylvania area and that whole ultraviolet hardcore style because I, I'm not a big fan of hardcore. Okay. Never was, never will be. And that's what CZW was known for at that time. Um, they were also known, they didn't really have a big women's division either. Um, when they brought me in, it was to mix it up with some of the girls and, you know, mix it up with the guys. Um, not that we had a falling out, it's just, it's one of those things where you can only wrestle the same girl. Or you didn't have enough girls, Mm -hmm. so you kind of part your ways and go somewhere else where they have girls, you know. In New Jersey slash New York, Connecticut, Boston, you have the same group of girls that travel together, Mm -hmm. like your your Little Feathers, Timmy Rogers, Missy Sampson. You travel with them and you wrestle them, mm-hmm. and that's all you have. Mm-hmm. And you can only wrestle them in so many companies, and that's what CZW was. Um, they try to bring girls in for me, try to mix it up with the guys, but you can only do so much. And I'm not one, like I said, I'm not one to do hardcore all the time. 
CCW was known for hardcore yes. all the time. Yes. Unlike now. <laughs> Unlike now, yeah. They, they kind of shifted. Yeah, bit. but it was an opportunity that I took. It was an opportunity that helped me. Any opportunities that I can take to get my name out there, yeah. uh, I'm going to take it regardless. And as long as they have my best interests at heart, I will work for a company. Mm-hmm. And that's what CCW did for me. Nice. So. I like that. I like that. Um, there are a lot of women's companies now. Oh, yeah. There are a ton. <laughs> Too many, I think, now. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's oversaturated. I now. think so. Um, what I like, though, is that a lot of companies are different, and they're focusing on different girls. Yeah. So it's not the same girls on every show, and that, that like these newer girls are kind of getting an opportunity to now network with each other and, you know, figure yeah. some things out. So I think as long as it's the, the shows aren't mere copies of each other, because... I just, I just saw that show, obviously, <laughs> over here. Um, that was their volume three. You don't have to redo that yeah. show. I, as long as, you know, we're using new talent and helping to, you know, bring new people up, I think it's it's only a good thing. It's only positive. Yeah, what, what I see now, um, especially with international talent and, and the oversaturation of women's companies, is that everyone's using the same talent. Mm-hmm. So you have to mix up the matches. I mean, you have your dream matches and you have your storylines, but how many times can you see a Mercedes versus like a Blue Fisto match mm-hmm. in every promotion that's running? Mm-hmm. And that's what people have to, uh, companies have to kind of get away from. Mm-hmm. If you see it in one company, don't take it and put it in another company, right. unless you're running a consecutive storyline right. between all of them and intermingling, you know, those storylines, mm-hmm. I guess you can say. Um, but I think a lot of people, a lot of the companies forget that. Mm-hmm. That even though you have your talent here and you want to grab them to pull your audience, mm-hmm. you can't do the same matches as someone just saw last mm-hmm. week. And exactly. you got to mix it up. And, 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 you know, and, and what happens is, is that if you have a company like WSU who runs only mainly in New Jersey, mm-hmm. no one's going to see that match mm-hmm. except for those New Jersey fans. Mm-hmm. And then, so you want to take that match, you want to put that match maybe down south because no one sees it down south, but people forget DVDs are out, exactly. reviews are out, mm-hmm. <laughs> iPay-per-view is out. Mm-hmm. So um, people, you know, videotape their stuff and you're going to see that match. Mm-hmm. So you kind of got to mix it up mm-hmm. and, you know, just the oversaturation, mix up, mix up your stuff, people. <laughs> Mix it up. Mix it up, man. Mix it up. Don't, don't keep putting dream matches on every show. Mm-hmm. You know, give the younger girls a chance to have a dream match mm-hmm. with somebody. And that's what we look for. That's what I look for. I, I would like to see a Marty Bell versus a Lufisto. Why not? No one's seen it. Let's book it. You, you, who knows? They, it can surprise you. And that's what you have to look for. It may not be a dream match to fans, but it's a dream match for Marty. Mm-hmm. It might be a dream match for Lufisto yeah. because she gets to train, you know, teach someone. You got to teach the young girls something because Absolutely. they're not going to get that opportunity right. somewhere else. Right. That's how I look at things. That's how I got my, you know, start mm-hmm. is, you know, they put me in a ring with a Malaya. They put me in a ring with Alexi and I wasn't ready, but it was a chance for me to learn and experience that and the pressure is on you, mm-hmm. and I think the young girls need that. And whoever booked that obviously knew, I mean, that this needed to happen because we have all wrestled Malaya, <laughs> we have all wrestled Lexi, Yes, we needed that experience. <laughs> <laughs> and we love them for it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> agreed, absolutely agreed. And I just feel like there are pockets. There's a girl here. There's a girl here. I'm like, how come I never see you on anything? You know, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep you in the back of my mind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be thinking yeah, about you. Yeah. You know, thank goodness for Twitter on my part. I'm like, now I can keep up with those people. I'm be like, okay, she's still doing stuff. Good, she's still doing stuff. Uh, because now that I'm in a position to help people, I, I'm trying to pull those people. I'm like, man, that girl down in Texas, I never see her doing anything. Yeah. I'm going to bring her up. Bring her up. And I'm going to put her against somebody. Oh, that redhead in Michigan? <laughs> mm, mm, mm. She should tag with another redhead. <laughs> those two would do something together. I like this. This is cute. And it's different. Yeah. And, and, and if promoters don't think like that and, and, and give these girls a chance to shine, you don't know what they're capable of mm-hmm. because they don't have the opportunity. Mm-hmm. All they need is one shot. Mm-hmm. If they mess it up, they mess it up. Then they know that was their yeah. shot. Better start back from the bottom. But if they rise to the occasion, superstar them right off of the bat. And, and that's what these girls need sometimes. I mean, sometimes they need a wide awakening and, and to open up their eyes. Yeah. And, and they need it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes their ego gets to their head. Mm-hmm. And you can put them in with someone who can bring it back down. Mm-hmm. But they need the opportunity. Absolutely. Also, then you also have those girls that people just have a huge buzz about. And you put them in that position, and then you never see them again. Exactly. They are gone. <laughs> I was just like, where did she go? What he happened? Is this big and you like, kinda... I know, you're cute, but, you know. 
Yeah. You're cute. Uh, only cute can get you so far. Oh, congrats. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. You're so funny. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. So um, I want to jump, because we talk about women's rest. I want to jump back into Shimmer. Um, you have these awesome, long, hard-hitting, but very uh, thoughtful matches. Um, you're becoming known as that person who can have these marathon matches and the thing is is that <laughs> i mean i trained at obw and to graduate out of rip rogers class is to have an hour-long broadway so that is not you know uncommon for me and i and i and i worked for harley race where he would come in and hey, girls i need 20 minutes from you I'm like, I'm like yeah 20 minutes dude <laughs> we're, we're not 20. i know nobody gets 20 minutes so here you are 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but you are actually known for having the longest women's wrestling match, I'm pretty sure in history, right? <laughs> and that, yeah. that actually was at WSU with was Alexis Nevea. Alexis Nevea, yeah. I'm not sure where she goes by now. I'm not sure either, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, and who knows what, by the time this interview comes out, what, what name that'll be. Yeah, she might be right. famous. Yeah, she might be. <laughs> <laughs> Um, whose idea was it to, to take it that far? Um, it was a last minute decision, I think. Um, we, we needed a pusher. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make her a, a big main eventer. Mm -hmm. And um, I wrestled her before in Triple W and in NACW. And it was just one of those things where it, people say that I make stars. I don't make stars. I think I put the pressure on people to push their potential. And I think that's what happened here. Uh, we were only supposed to go maybe 40 minutes and probably a week or two before the show, uh, Sean McCaffrey, who is, was the owner of WSU, said, hey, do you think we can do an hour out of her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do an hour. I can do two hours if you tell me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care how long I go. My cardio is good. My psychology is fine. It's can she go? And it's pushing her to the limit. It's making her a main event because we needed a main eventer. Mm -hmm. um, if I was to leave WSU, who can lead that charge? Mm -hmm. And it's pushing her. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't expect to go 73 minutes expected to go maybe 70 71 it just kind of happened that it just kept going <laughs> and it was time to end the match yeah <laughs> um but but she pushed me i pushed her mm -hmm. and um it was one of those matches where you don't rehearse you just go out there and you work mm -hmm. you feed off the crowd mm -hmm. you feed off what you know and and you make a beautiful storyline mm -hmm. out of it and that's what happened and and kudos to her because she stepped up to the plate mm -hmm. she became a main eventer for wsu mm -hmm. And it's just, it was a beautiful thing. <laughs> not a lot of people can, can take that not knowing that they can have the potential to go there. And mm -hmm. I think she, um, she thanks me for it. And, you know, I thank her for it because going toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone who you haven't worked for for a while, maybe 20 minutes here and there, but to go an hour with someone and trust them mm -hmm. to keep the match entertaining, mm -hmm. that takes a lot of skill. Mm -hmm. and, and she stepped up and, and did her best, and I, I'm glad for it. Mm -hmm. So... That's fantastic. <laughs> and, but, you know, and like, again, with uh, running women's shows, there's that opportunity to have those kinds of matches now, whereas back in the day when we were just one match on the show, five minutes, like, five <laughs> minutes with entrance, um, <laughs> you, um, if you could just, you know, roll up, just, you know, something yeah, simple. Great. No finishers. Thank you. You get to the back. Did you watch it? No, I missed it. Um, now you're having those matches that are must-see. You're having those kinds of matches where people are like, oh, oh, she's going to be wrestling. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not getting up. I'm not getting up. No, no. I'll pee later. No, no. I'm, I need to, you know, it's not just women wrestling. It's it's the main event. It's, it's the whole event, actually, yeah. now. You know, every match is a must see because even if it's not your favorite wrestler, she's about to be, she's about to, you're about to find out. She's about to be your favorite wrestler. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so um, let's talk about WSU for I, a second. WSU. Yes. Uh, WSU. Um, yes, you had the, like the, one of the longest uh, matches ever there, but you've done a lot of really epic stuff at WSU. Yes. You have feuded with Angel Orsini there. I love it. Yeah, man. You know, um, and help put WSU on the map. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I've interviewed all three members of the Midwest Militia already, and they all keep coming back and talking about one specific <laughs> match was the freaking War Games 
that you guys did and how exciting it was to be part of something something so epic something different um i know that wsu has a lot going on i know that they changed hands and all that good stuff but you were one of the girls who they really built that company around Mm -hmm. um what was it like when the beginning of WSU? Because it's definitely def- different now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's different now. Uh-huh. It's, it's, uh, it's different. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I first started in WSU, it was a company, just a regular indie company. It was, uh, Sean McCaff took, took that company and, and put me behind it to kind of propel it. Um, I don't know why people want me to be their... <laughs> Uh, role model for a women's companies that just so happens that I have to start their women's companies and I'm the forefront um, WSC was one of those um, I brought in Angel Orsini. I was coming back from an injury Angel Orsini was uh, Renewing her name. I guess you can say um, We formed the tag team. We don't have a name. Just but you mean Angel <laughs> um, and, and we kind of took WSU to the next level um, What ended up happening was uh, I revamped the whole locker room um, I basically wanted certain girls in there to kind of make WSU a power player. Um, there was no women companies out there. WSU was, it started out as a men's company changing over to a women's company. Okay. That's basically how it started. Okay. Uh, there really was no titles, no spirit titles. There was nothing. Mm-hmm. It was just something that was built from the ground up, literally. Um, that time we had, uh, who did we have? We had Bobcat. <laughs> we had Missy Hyatt. Oh, it is a different company. Uh, uh, Miss George. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a different company. Completely different company. Um, when I first started, uh, eventually, uh, when 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 I, t- I mean, Sean, uh, we had this working relationship where it was business and, and personal. Where it was, we wanted to make WSU a power player, and and to do that, we had to revamp the company, revamp the whole locker room, and bring in people who were starting their names. Alicia, who's a uh, mainstay in New Jersey, was our power player. She was the one that everyone knew in New Jersey. WSU is based in New Jersey, and she had to be a maid inventor, and that's what she was. Mm-hmm. We had to bring in Nikki Rocks, who's from Massachusetts. She's another big name power player. Mm-hmm. Um, I came in. I brought in Andrew Orsini, and that was your main core as your power player. She had your Lear Little Feather. Uh, who's another one from New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Uh, we wanted to bring names that people weren't used to seeing on a regular basis into a woman's company, and that's how that began. Um, when WSU wanted to give me the title, um, I didn't expect to keep it for three years. Mm-hmm. It's, it, that's a long time to keep a title. And that was the world title? Yeah, yeah. there were title mm-hmm. title. Um, they gave it to me. Um, I, I, I had a long-standing feud with uh, Angel Orsini. Um, it was a thing where I respected her. She helped train me. She was with my trainer, Jason Knight. It was a working relationship where, you know, she was like my best friend. We traveled everywhere. Um, a few that uh, put WSU on the map, legit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the longest, uh, we had the Iron Woman match, the first one. 71 minutes, I think it was, uh, for WSU. We had the cage match. Mm-hmm. Tables, ladders, and chairs. Uh, Anything goes. Throwing me off of balconies. No, no. Um, (laughs) You know, you do what you got to do to put a company on the map. I guess so. (laughs) And it was before Mm iPay-Per-View. It was our, 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 we were on stage and and you had a theater setting. And and that's how WSU began. Um, You know, once I won the title, it was now we have to bring in more power players. Um, When you get away from Angel Orsini, what is left for Mercedes to do? Who is she going to wrestle? At that time, me and Angel teamed up, and, and Midwest, uh, Jessica Havoc came in with Haley Hatred mm-hmm. before Midwest Militia came in. Mm-hmm. So they were their, our power players for t- tag teams, okay. and, and we kind of did a run with them, and they kind of ran Havoc, literally, <laughs> through WSU. Um, at that point, Haley Hatred kind of left WSU, and we were left with Havoc. Um, I, I, I would like to say WSU made Havoc. I like to say that, and the reason why I did that is because I took Havoc under my wing. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Sean decided Havoc was going to be your main eventer, your big heel. I needed a run with someone who can uh, help put WSU on a different level. Whereas, you know, me and Angel Orsini took it to one level, but Havoc was your beast, mm-hmm. your monster, and we no one's had that. Mm-hmm. So I like to say that Havoc stepped up to the game, stepped up to the plate, and, and raised her stakes up with me. Mm-hmm. Um, Midwest Militia. And an infamous machete. <laughs> oh, girl. Oh. Um, 
let's just say that uh, the War Games was something different. No one's ever done anything like that. Uh, War Games was a, a, a feud between the original WSUs with Midwest Militia making their stake and, and, and coming in and trying to take over WSU. Um, and, and the War Games match, uh, anything goes. <laughs> Uh, I got hurt. Um, I, came, I fell off uh, the top rope, landed really hard on my neck. Kind of just didn't feel anything. Don't remember much about it okay. until I watched footage. Okay. And all I remember is uh, one of the girls, I, I believe it was, uh, I want to say Sassy Steph, grabbed me and, and she was like, all right, we're, 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 we're going to kill you. And da, 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 da. I'm just like, what in the world is going on? I'm dazed, confused. Here comes Havoc grabbing me. Mind you, I... In, in, it's wrestling etiquette. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna shoot here. If, if anybody knows what that is, it's wrestling etiquette is if someone's hurt, you don't do anything mm -hmm. to them. I don't know if they realized I was hurt. I, I tend to think that they did. Mm -hmm. I think now they do because mm -hmm. we smooth things over. Um, it was one of those things where storyline becomes real life. Mm -hmm. You know, anytime someone gets hurt in the ring, you kind of just storylines out the window. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they realize that. Mm -hmm. um, I got sent to the hospital. Um, I got stuck with a stinger. I'm a concussion. Um, I couldn't I couldn't work <laughs> you know my, my life was in their hands mm -hmm. and regardless of storyline or not machete to my face it, it, it's one of those things where you just don't do mm -hmm. you know uh, storyline out the window you just kind of just say you know what real life is real life you kind of just keep going with the storyline but you don't want to make it too real mm -hmm. because if, if, if I can't get up and I can't respond there's a problem what if that machete would have fell mm -hmm. or I, I can't I can't protect myself and that's what happened I took that bump and I couldn't protect myself at all mm -hmm. uh -uh. I'm, I'm complete I'm a little confused as far as there's in the war games are there no referees or is there anyone no. to officiate um, because th there's there's a referee on the outside mm -hmm. and I don't remember if there was one in the inside it, it, the, the war games itself it, it's it's fuzzy to me it still is because I have to watch the footage for me to remember anything. Mm -hmm. uh, with me getting the mild concussion, I don't remember the match at all. Yeah. I, I remember the, the cage being wobbly uh, because there was gaps in the cage. It was a, it was a horrible cage. Like, like <laughs> it was the worst cage <laughs> you can get for a match. Mm -hmm. um, a, a match of this magnitude, it, it was just, you can literally just climb the cage why when you can just go through you can just go through it. <laughs> like that's yeah. how big the gap was wow. it was just so bad and, and I should have known like just trying to do stuff um, um shooting here and, and just getting away from wrestling etiquette it, it's it was dangerous mm -hmm. um you know uh, I I don't remember the match at all I don't remember there was referees and I think there was referees on the outside mm -hmm. I don't think there was a referee on the inside mm -hmm. I don't remember to be honest because um, I do know that was, I think the gimmick was that somebody was supposed to quit, right? Yeah, it, it was. Yeah, it, you had to give up mm -hmm. uh, at some point, and, and and that was the whole premise of the whole match mm -hmm. was you know Midwest Militia was coming in to take over WSU, and you know me, Amy Lee, and and Alicia, who were the originals in WSU, were not going to let that happen. That was the whole premise about it, mm -hmm. and and you know I. I I think with them handcuffing the girls, I don't know if they realized that I was really legit hurt. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I can take I can take a beating and then some, but when I don't respond or I don't know anything and then there's ambulances, that's all real. <laughs> that that's not that's not staged at mm -hmm. all. You know, wrestling is I don't want to say fake, it's fixed is, is how I like to put it. But the stuff that happens in there you get hit for real. And and I don't remember the machete until I watch the tape. Until so people tell me, Hey, there was a machete dangling from me. Really? You know, so I was heated. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, like I said, we smooth things over because, you know, sometimes you, you don't know. But I was really pissed off. I was ready to kill, bitch. Mm -hmm. I was ready to kill Havoc. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and it was one of those things where I did interviews and, and they kept touching base on it. And I'm like, wrestling etiquette is wrestling etiquette. Mm -hmm. If you know someone's hurt, you just don't. You, you just wipe the storyline out the window. Mm -hmm. you, you protect your opponents. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I think that's where Havoc and, and I, uh, we took our real life situation and made it bigger than life mm -hmm. and and that's what helped propel WSU to bigger life mm -hmm. where you know I had a you know I lost the title to her and it made her the superstar that she is now I'm sorry I t I'm taking credit for Havoc you go ahead I, I'm gonna take go ahead. I'm gonna go take ahead. credit and, and shoot wise I have to because um, we took that situation uh, with the machete in my face into something real life and made it into a story 
and made it to something entertaining that people were following, that people wanted to follow WSU. People wanted to see if I was going to kill the bitch. Mm -hmm. And it's type thing, am I really going to, you know, forget about the wrestling aspect of wrestling and actually hit for real and, 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 and kill her? Mm -hmm. um, there's one thing when you hit someone, you protect your, your opponents, but am I really going to punch her and, and really do an all-out bra and get gangster? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shoot wise, I was, and you know, the professionalism got the best of me. And I'm, it's 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 for business, you know. You you, you look. I, that's how I looked at it. It's business. You turn something to something beautiful, and, and look where havoc is now. Mm -hmm. I say she she wouldn't be where she was. She is now if it wasn't for me. Oh yeah, I take all the credit for her. Go story. ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead. She better say the same thing. I think she did. No. <laughs> I think she did. I'm pretty sure I'll send you a copy of the DMT. Yeah. No, yeah. but I, I, and I think she appreciates it. I mean, it, it's, you know, we have no heat, no nothing. Uh, she's one of my good friends now. And, and, and it's one of those things where we say sorry, you say sorry, you mean it, and, and you keep it moving. Yeah. Wrestling is wrestling. and Plus, we learned something, didn't we? We all learned a really big lesson. Don't fuck with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's, it's uh, you know, it's when someone gets hurt in the ring, you've got to protect them, regardless of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Camera's rolling or not. Mm -hmm. Everything goes out the window because mm -hmm. if I hurt someone in the ring, I could give two shits what I'm getting paid. Mm -hmm. It's, I want, are you okay? Exactly. Out the window. Yeah. And that's didn't happen. Safety first. Safety first. Safety first. Right. You know, we so want to live to see tomorrow. the next day. We want to live to see, you know, our mothers and our fathers, brothers and sisters. And if someone puts that in jeopardy, you, you get mad. <laughs> Absolutely. And my life was in their hands and they kind of just took it overboard just a little bit. That's that, real, that was a real machete in there. That was a real machete. If y'all don't know, that wasn't a play toy. That was real. That's some real shit. <laughs> what if that fell? I love those girls. Uh, <laughs> but I love you guys uh, now. Bygones be bygones. Okay. Uh, real emotion on that one. Uh, but bygones be bygones. I love you guys. And, right. and I do now. And, you know, it's off for the sake of business. And we put stuff aside. And... Mm -hmm. Keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not only it just it just made Jessica a, a huge superstar yeah, and just monster. In solidified you, you know, as what we already know, one of the best hard hitting, well trained female wrestlers on the planet. So, <laughs> kudos to you, and I'm I'm glad everything turned out for the best. Yeah. Um, I know Jessica was somebody. Jessica's somebody I've known for a really long time. Mm -hmm long before WSU back when she was super green and <laughs> very insecure so I appreciate um, what you did for her because she needed somebody she really did she needed somebody <laughs> and yeah it was you girl yeah it was me yeah I made her the monster she is now <laughs> let's hope she keeps that persona because it's great I don't think it's going anywhere anytime I think it's going anywhere. All right. <laughs> Back into Shimmer. Um, so you, I know I'm all over the place today. It's, 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 it's early. It's early and I haven't had breakfast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm tired. I'm like, I'm hoping I don't fall asleep. I'm trying to stay awake here. My nerves are a little shot. <laughs> um, you've been almost, you've pretty much been with Shimmer the whole time. I know there was a break in there. Yeah. Um, what what led you to leave Shimmer for a little while? Um, I had shoulder surgery. Okay. Um, a major shoulder surgery where it took me out about a year and a half. Okay. Um, basically, I uh, I tore my ligament so bad that it stretched, and it came to the point where if I was to raise my arm, shoulder would pop out. Combing my hair, taking a shower, wow. reaching for you know the cabinet, mm -hmm. it would just dislocate and just not pop back in until maybe an hour later. It would just kind of dangle there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went in for major shoulder surgery, and what they did was they tightened up the capsule. Uh, shortened up my bicep tendon just to kind of keep it in place. Uh, my uh, shoulder blade was winging out, so you can kind of see the bone hanging out over wow. here. So they had to tighten all that back up, all through one little incision. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I just have one little scar. But, um, yeah, they, they did major surgery on there. Mm -hmm. um, I have about 90% mobility in my arm, so I can't do, like, slams or anything like that. I have to be careful because it is too tight. But, uh I came back probably about a year and a half later, I want to say, and at that time, the whole dynamic of Shimmer changed. <laughs> you know, their Sarah Ray was on top when I left, and when I came back, she was about to be on her way down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was new champions being involved. I think Miss Ship became champion when I came back. So it was, uh, the dynamic of Shimmer changed when I came back, and I was just trying to make my way back up and, and feel things, so, you know surgery kind of put me on the shelf but I wasn't forgotten <laughs> no no not forgotten at all no I came back <laughs> yeah girl so what were your first matches back like you're, you're you're healthy now and you're ready to jump back in it uh for shimmer I believe my one of my first matches back was Wesna 
Wow. A powerhouse. Yes. <laughs> what? I don't know if I was ready for her, but uh, I came back and they were like, you got Wesna. What? Uh, yeah. My shoulder, uh, I don't know if I can handle that. But at that time, with, with the shoulder injury, I kind of changed my style of wrestling. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't want to do anything off the top rope. Um, it was more strikes, uh, ground-based, technical submission type of wrestling. Um, I had to protect myself more. And, and when you have an injury, whether it's a leg injury, ankle, whatever injury you have, you, you change your style of wrestling. Mm-hmm. I was more known as a high flyer slash brawler, whereas now I couldn't do half of that stuff because I was limited to what I can do. Mm-hmm. So I had to rely on technical psychology work and submissions and limit my brawling because even a forearm could, could damage my shoulder. Mm-hmm. So, you know, putting me with Wesna, who is a powerhouse just like me, it was I had to change my dynamic mm-hmm. of wrestling. And I, I think uh, that match kind of led to what I am now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't do much in the ring, but what I do counts. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I tend to stick to the ground. Everything's psychology. There's a story to be told in my matches. I'm not a flashy wrestler at all, but if I hit you, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> it's going to count. Ah. <laughs> I'm not trying to hurt my arm for no. you unless it's going to count. But uh, Wesna was one of my first uh, matches back from uh, in Shermer. I can't remember the rest, That's unfortunately, right. no, but I remember her. You're, we're like, you're on volume 60, so believe uh, yeah. you're, you're, you're on 60, I don't remember. 50 we're, something. 50 I something. think we're like 66 yeah, now. Yeah, like, nobody <laughs> expected to remember every match. I can't remember half my matches <laughs> nowadays. That's okay, I thank goodness for DVDs. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me go back to yeah. volume 20 something what? <laughs> But, you know, you've had some, like, epic battles in Shimmer. Like, you have really got to mix it up with a lot of really awesome yeah, talent. Yeah. Like, Dave has always, you know, killed you. <laughs> that, too. That, too. I was going to say give you some amazing matches. He gave me amazing matches. Uh, put pressure on me, though. <laughs> <laughs> but a little pressure is good. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Go from going from being, I have nobody to work, to having uh, a, whole world, to work. <laughs> a whole world. A whole world. Of, of talent now yeah. you know he kind of opened up the world and kind of mixed everything together now yeah. with the world just being so small thanks internet uh you know it's it's so much easier now to kind of handpick people and being like no she's doing good things over here we need to grab yeah, her she's doing her. good things over here if you're only a, you're only a plane flight away you know <laughs> they can afford it right <laughs> <laughs> Don't fly for free. Right? <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> but you, you just, you know, you have got to, you know, take that opportunity and be so thankful to be able to get in yeah. the ring and actually yeah. showcase what you're super passionate about, especially the way you feel about women's wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm very blessed and I'm very lucky to be able to get in the ring with a lot of international uh, superstars mm-hmm. and, and, and I guess do what I do. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think I'm the best. I think I'm maybe one of the best um, I tend to think that uh, my style is different than what people were doing at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's still different, and, and, you know, I stay true to what I know. And I think that keeps me still booked and, and still keeps me in demand because mm-hmm. uh, I do things differently. Mm-hmm. And that's just the way I am. I'm very old school, but I know how to adapt to anybody who I, who gets in the room with me. So. Well, you say you're not, that you don't think you're the best. No, no, no. In I'm 2011, right. PWI said you were the second number two, <laughs> girl. They said you were number two. That was back in 2011. Yeah, I know, girl, I'm but, look, 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 you know what? We, we don't take those kinds of things uh, seriously. But, we're, you know, we're, you're always appreciative that somebody is watching yeah. and kind of saying, man, you're really, really good. Not that I don't think ranking people is um, yeah, really I'm accurate. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of ranking. I don't think it's accurate because wins and losses aren't real. Um, exactly. But, <laughs> <laughs> but talent is, you know. So I think of, of more as a recognition of talent, not necessarily wins and losses. Yeah. Because uh, it's ridiculous. The I think, yeah, uh, I, I think with any accolades that I get, whether it's a, a magazine ranking or a title that was put on, it's because people believe in me. They believe in what I can offer uh, women's wrestling, um, what I can do and, and, and promote their company and, and, and I guess you can say um, help their women wrestlers. Um, I, I'm blessed. I'm always going to say that because I don't think I would have gotten this far. I always said it was maybe five years max in wrestling because I want to go back to school. Mm-hmm. But one thing led to another. I traveled the world, and uh, here I am still 14 years later. <laughs> I know. How did that happen? <laughs> I'm still here. I'm so proud of my body's handle it. Still healthy. 
So yeah, for the most part, yeah. <laughs> you know, haven't gone crazy yet. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I know it's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> you can only wrestle for so long. <laughs> We try. We're trying to. We're tr- holding yeah. on for dear life right yeah, now. Yeah. Right. Look, girl, that's why I'm doing interviews. Look, I know. <sighs> I know. <laughs> I really do know. Um, let's talk about something fun that you got to do that I absolutely adore and wish they're still around. Wrestlelicious. Oh, <laughs> Wrestlelicious. <laughs> fun. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was awesome. So you were not a fan of Glow growing up. No, no. But no. I was young. I wanted to athletic. I know. I know. <laughs> But here comes Johnny Caffarella. <laughs> yes. Yes, Johnny. We love you, too. Yes, we love you, uh, <laughs> Russellicious. He wants to bring back the glow style. And who does who does he contact? Who does who does he call? Huh? He calls Mercedes. He calls Mercedes. <laughs> yeah. Calls Mercedes out of all people. <laughs> this girl known for going hard, doing her thing. Yep. Girl, we want you to put on a costume. We want you to wrestle on our television. Show. <laughs> How'd you feel about that? Um, I was actually very excited um, to kind of get away from Mercedes. Um, that whole her um, um, style, uh-huh. and he was like, just have fun. Um, even though I have fun in my matches when I, whenever I'm Mercedes, yeah. Um, it was uh, Maria Tara was a whole different bull fighting gimmick, and and it was just fun. Um, I didn't have to worry about killing someone mm-hmm. or anything like that it was all about like storylines mm-hmm. and just laughing and, and, and putting off facade a different um, character and, and that's something that I, I wanted to do maybe I wasn't a fan of Bo when I was young because when you're young you don't look at that stuff mm-hmm. you know it's tomboy mm-hmm. but as I got older and, and got Russellicious it's like yep this is what I want to do. Uh, I want to keep going with this girl style. I want to just have fun. And that's what we're all about. Oh, yeah. Good times. Good times. I wasn't at the same taping as you. Uh, I was at a different taping. But it's okay. No. Look. Anytime you can be a different character than you normally are. I think a lot of times when we wrestle, we're supposed to be an extension of ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But when Choose you get to one. completely do something that is not you, um, I think... I, I hate to say it, we're acting, but, <laughs> but that's what it is. Part of part yeah, of acting. Yes, <laughs> but it's so much fun to just step outside of yourself and just to be something completely off the wall and completely not you. Yeah. Um, getting to see you in that <laughs> outfit, <laughs> girl. I wish I had a picture. I would. I would pull that up right now. We might put it in the DVD oh, um, if we can get the rights to the show the picture. Doesn't look know. like me. <laughs> you you were cute. <laughs> Look at you. Back. Yeah. So uh, completely different. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I felt like I was in a Halloween costume. <laughs> Some of them were Halloween costumes. I think mine was. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? Oh, Who did you God. wrestle for Russell Delicious? Uh uh-uh. I was Maria Turner. Who did I wrestle? I wrestled uh Did you did you do a tag match? I did a tag with Rain. Yeah. Um, what was her name? F- F- Felony? Yes, that she was, was known as Felony yeah. at the time. And, um, Came out I, handcuffs, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she had a fun one. Yeah, man. I would love to do that one. And we wrestled, uh, what was her name? Um, I know it was Lorelai. was her wrestling oh, name. Oh, she was probably some kind of cowgirl. Cowgirl yeah. thing in Jig and... Uh, Texas or something, is that right? Something like that, okay. yeah. It's it's so long ago, I'm sorry. It was, it was a few years ago. It That's was a few okay. years ago. We still hold in our heart. We still want to come back. <laughs> We're Miss Delicious, I'm ready. <laughs> Wait for that call. I still got my outfit. <laughs> I costume. I still have it. I don't I know if it fits, two. but I still have it. <laughs> it's like by two. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was fun. I mean, it was a different atmosphere. It was a, it was a taping. Mm-hmm. Um... Different way to do your audiences. Uh, yeah, the audience was different. It, it was it? like one sided, I guess you can say, and you had to like the audience was behind you, and your camera was in front of you, and you had to always. It, it taught me how to look at the camera mm-hmm. and not look over here, mm-hmm. and and that's something that was uh, that was different. So sorry, I'm tearing up because I'm tired. <laughs> So tired. I promise we're we are we're getting to the nitty gritty and we'll work ah, it. I think everyone yes. wants to know about that. Look, I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm, that's what it is. I'm hot. I'm tired. <laughs> Try to keep my eyes open a little Girl, bit. We're, we are. I promise we are almost done. We're good. almost done. So wrestling was fun. Departure from the norm. Good stuff. Um, hope to see I'll you. Get your name yeah. out there. Hey, okay, look. Was, uh, look. The bookings are booking. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. They had TV. Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy Hart. Right. Jimmy Hart. <laughs> <laughs> what? Of course, I want to be a part of that. Uh, 
let's see, um, you had one of the few live <laughs> tryout matches for oh, WWE. Yeah. Live. Yes, girl. Could not believe. Because I feel like uh, Victoria, Tara, Lisa Marie, she was kind of going through a very similar thing up there. She did not have a lot of people to wrestle. Yeah. Uh, Whose fault was that? Um, <laughs> so she was getting to do, you know, people's tryout matches, and you and I want to say one other person got to actually have your tryout actually on television. Live. <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Talk about a uh, no script. <laughs> you mess up. You uh -huh, mess up uh -huh. in front of the world. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, How did that happen? I mean, um, obviously you've had other WWE tryouts. Yeah. This wasn't your first one. No. And 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 they know who you were. They know you can go. Um, um it came about. Uh, I was working for WXW. Pops gave me my uh, second tryout. Uh, this one actually, I can't remember who contacted me, but it, it was through Pops as well. Um, they just said, hey there's a spot opening you want to come down I'm like yeah I'll come down I think it was gonna be on TV mm -hmm. uh, usually you get down there you know really early and you have your tryout in your street clothes or your workout clothes mm -hmm. and you kind of go in there and say no bring your gear my gear like my gear gear <laughs> they're like yeah you're gonna be on TV I'm like oh okay I started to do my own makeup and oh. stuff you know um, but when I got there uh, Lisa knew me um, uh, at that time who was there at that time um mickey james was there so i knew mickey james from back in the, the day mm -hmm. uh you know i was in the indies <clears throat> um but uh we got there we wrestled i got in the ring uh it it was i was natural uh as they put it i was a diamond in the rough mm -hmm. um i was one of those that uh who knew what to do um but wasn't polished enough mm -hmm. for tv mm -hmm. i guess you can say but i mean i did my match with lisa it was easy mm -hmm. it was uh I guess showcase what I can do and what my potential can be, but it's Lisa, mm -hmm. <laughs> Victoria. Yeah. Uh, you can only do so much on TV to not uh, showcase too much, mm -hmm. but to show your potential. And mm -hmm. that's what I did. I mean, it was an experience that I loved and, and I would have loved to keep doing it more, but unfortunately it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> it was but awesome. I had the opportunity and that's all I cared about. Yeah. It was, it was one of those moments where we're at home watching television and you, you the match gets announced and you're like, <laughs> What? What's going on? Oh, 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 oh! Is this happening? Is this really happening? And then it happens, and then it doesn't happen. Again. It doesn't happen again. And doesn't yeah. happen again. Um, but girl, that was the awesome. opportunity, though. It's an yeah. opportunity. It's an experience. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you live and you learn, and and you take the opportunities as it's given to you. Mm -hmm. And um, I look back at it as you know, it's a stepping point. If I didn't do that, who knows what would have happened after that? Mm -hmm. Um. I like to look at it as WWE probably wasn't ready for me. I mean, they, they had their divas at that time, and, and they had their models. I always say WWE can make their stars, but you can't change someone who knows how to wrestle. Mm -hmm. You can't downgrade them from what they already know. You can't dummy them up. They try. Man, do they try. But you can't. Uh -huh. <laughs> they try I won't, I, And not to say that I will sell out, because, I mean, anybody who gets on WWE, God bless you. Mm -hmm. That's your dream goal, but that's not my goal. I want to wrestle. I want to wrestle as Mercedes, my style, mm -hmm. and not dubbing myself up and, and, and get on TV with a, a character. It's not about the money. It's never about the money. It's never about the fame. Mm -hmm. It's I want to do something different, and, and it's what I love to do. And I want to showcase women's wrestling for what, it's, what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a sport. Mm -hmm. And I would never sell myself out. For my morals or for money, fame, it doesn't matter. I don't care if I'm on TV. Mm -hmm. I just do it because I love it. It's always been like that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Money talks to a certain extent, but I won't sell myself out for money. Yeah, because a lot of times the money's not that good. So, um, <laughs> you know, it, 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 you no. really can't be in wrestling for the money. No, because no. usually it's not It's there. not about the money. Yeah. It's not about the fame. Um, I can care less if people cared about my name or if I got booked anywhere. I did it because I loved it. Mm -hmm. And I did it because I wanted to showcase women's wrestling and what I was all about mm -hmm. and what I know mm -hmm. and, and what I can do. And not for anything else. Gotcha. So... <laughs> I think we know this about you. I think we got yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's all about wrestling. Oh. <laughs> very private person as well, so. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being a private person. A lot of times, I think, you know, in this day and age of the internet and yeah. Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all this stuff, social networking, and social people media. just want to know everything about you, and that's not necessarily their business. You don't know anything about me. 
I don't have a Facebook. I don't have a Twitter. I don't have an Instagram. I don't even have a website. No. <laughs> I don't have nothing. Mm-hmm. I don't have T-shirts. No. I, I just, I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like my work to speak for itself. Mm-hmm. I'm not one to promote myself mm-hmm. through anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to see me, you got to see me live. Yeah. You want my pictures, you got to get it at mm-hmm. a show. Yeah. You want T-shirts, if I have any, you got to get it at a show. Uh-huh. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, that's the old school way of doing things. Mm-hmm. And I'm not all about social media because... I got a real life. <laughs> right? I got a real life. Right? Real life. How about everybody get one of those instead of playing on the computer all day? Put that phone I ain't got time for that. Right? <laughs> Nobody got time got for time that. To I got to work. I got to go to work. I got to enjoy work. life. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And I think a lot of times, now especially in wrestling, people are so caught up in the social media part of it that they're forgetting about the actual wrestling. You know, everybody's a star on the internet, by the way. Everybody, everybody's a star. I'm not on the internet, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a star in my own right. Yes, yes. I, I had a girl who I used to train with or trained with us, and she had literally 33,000 Twitter followers. I was like, but she t- cannot lock up. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> that is a problem. Stop calling yourself a wrestler because you can't lock up. You're a wrestler. Yeah. There's a difference. <laughs> You're a worker, not a wrestler. Right? So You work him. Girl, stop. Take yeah. that off there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the, you had the dark match, and that was, well, it wasn't dark, it was live. It was, live. The, it was a live yeah, match. Yeah, girl, that was <laughs> awesome. Dark match. I know, it was our tryout match. Usually that, that stuff is dark, you know, before TV, after TV, you know, and, and that was like such they, an amazing moment. They took a chance yeah. on me. You know, every time they take a chance on somebody who came up, out of the indies who worked hard who knows the struggle who've been there done that it, you know we all cheer like oh, it's possible <laughs> it's possible gives you hope mom did you see that <laughs> I think I called my mom and said hey did you see that if you didn't I taped it for you yeah. no worries yeah my mom doesn't watch me at all really after 14 years I think she's been to two matches that's crazy I can give her DVDs and that's the only way she would watch me if that wow is the rest of your family supportive Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. My family is very supportive. Mm-hmm. They're like, go, go, go. But um, it's different when it's your mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My mom is very, no, don't get hurt. Uh-huh. <laughs> She's seen how the bruises and the yeah. bumps and the concussions, for goodness sakes. Um, so she can't watch me live mm-hmm. because she knows something might happen. Mm-hmm. After the show, if I give her the DVD, mm-hmm. she goes, okay, I know it already happened. Mm-hmm. You're fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's cute. Um, but she has all the magazines mm-hmm. I'm in, all my pictures. She has all my T-shirts. Everything that I'm in, she has, has mm-hmm. memorabilia. I think Aww. she has everything more than I do. That's so cute. Yeah. Oh, My mom has a, a museum of wrestling in her house, and she always wants everybody's 8x10, no matter who yeah. they are. <laughs> if I'm on a show, everybody. she wants everybody's picture. She's uh, like, did you God. get that cute little boy's picture? <laughs> who is he? Yeah. yeah. Um, and my mom watches Raw Wrestling. She watches uh, Ring of Honor. She watches TNA. She, no, I don't even watch any of that stuff. Like, 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 mom. <laughs> she's like, I just, that TJ Perkins is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. No, my mom's adorable. My mom's like that. My mom, you, my mom can't name a wrestler. That's okay. As long as she knows who Mercedes is. She, she, they shouldn't even call me Mercedes. She's like, that's my girl. Yeah. That's my daughter. That's my baby. Aww. That's it. That's beautiful. That's cute. <laughs> So the rest of your family is super supportive. Right. Do they do they come to the shows? Like um, if you're in the area, if I'm in the area, maybe mm-hmm. they they will. But they got a life too. Mm-hmm. Um, the ex them a DVD. <laughs> I like that. If they can come, they come. Mm-hmm. Um, their their thing is, they're scared. Uh, my style of wrestling is very uh, rough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're afraid that I'm gonna get hurt, so they would rather just not watch me. Really? Yeah. Even after 14 years. Even after 14 you know, I years. This. I got this. <laughs> my brothers, if I'm in town, my brothers will watch me live. They mm-hmm. can make it, but everyone's got a real life. <laughs> they support me mm-hmm. from afar. I like that. And that's right. just the way it is. Nothing wrong with they that. Send me the tapes. All right. <laughs> You're on TV, send it to me. All right. <laughs> cool. Well, I'll send them a copy of the, 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 the DVD. There you go. There you go. They'll, they'll be caught up on everything you do. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I talk to them. Okay. They, okay. they know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, the last thing I really want to talk to you about is Shine, because Shine is, like, the end-all, be-all, and kind of in my mind right now. I think it is one of the best all-women promotions oh, yeah. that has ever happened, um, not only because it's, it's ran by a woman, um, one of the most influential women in, in wrestling yes. today, yeah. Lexi Fife, who I've already interviewed, and you can all pick that up on high spots. Uh, plug, plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
she has done such an amazing job of running this show on almost on the monthly basis. Yeah. Cuz that's the thing with most women's promotions, they don't run on the monthly on the monthly basis. I'm sure months. it's very expensive to bring in and, and fly all these people in every month, but she has managed to pull together such an amazing roster and to run these really awesome storylines. Um, you have been a part of this. Yep. This upstart. Ugh. This, this young company that just turned one years old, it's about to turn two, actually. About to turn two, it's yeah. about to turn two. My God, where does time go? Oh, my gosh. You have so had some, <laughs> once again, epic battles in shine as well. Come on. Come on. Stop. Stop. You versus Jazz. Oh, well, Jazz is a good friend of mine. Yeah, buddy. I just saw her. She loves you. Yeah, she yeah. Loves you. <laughs> I just saw her a couple weeks ago. Yeah. She's a good friend of She's mine. She's the best. She's the best. Tell me about your experience with Shine and working for Lexi. Obviously, you know, you, you've worked for her for Seven Ladies. You know, she's always bringing people in. But when she told you about Shine and what they're going to do. I was on the bandwagon. Yes. <laughs> um, it's one of those things where everyone was migrating to Florida. <laughs> and Florida needs something. Mm -hmm. um, I moved down to Florida from Connecticut a couple years ago. So, about, I want to say three years now. Back, Shine just, it was only two years old. So, um, there was nothing in Florida. You had to work for WXW. I think that's all I worked for <laughs> in Florida. So there, it, we needed something here besides TNA and, and, and WWE. And just Lexi decided with Sal. Mm -hmm. but no, if anybody knows Sal, he was FIP and stuff. Um, she said, hey, we got this company. You want to be, we want to get you in. Are, are you willing to do it? Yeah. It's 20 minutes from my house. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I can take the day off from work and stuff and, and, and. Her idea was, let it be di different from Shimmer and WSU and, and, and any other women's company out there. Uh, it's locally based. Uh, anybody who lived in Florida had a chance to be on the show. Mm -hmm. And um, you had your epic, epic battles. You had Jazz on the first show? Yeah, Jazz versus Jazz, Sarah. Jazz, yeah. Jazz, yep, you had Sarah the Array. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, you want to bring the people that everyone knows, but you want to bring your locals into it too. And I think after two years, Shine is something big because of it's locally based and, and it's a storyline based company and it runs every month and that's not what women's companies do. Mm -hmm. They don't run every month. Mm -hmm. And and for me to be on it from the start, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, Lexi Fife's like family to me. I consider her, it's mama. Mm -hmm. That's mama Lexi. Right. <laughs> um, Lexi's been in my life for, for probably 10, 11 years already. And anything, and just personal and wrestling wise, she's the one to go to. So for her to you know, help start this company, you couldn't add, ask for someone better. She knows the women's wrestling, mm -hmm. and she will tell you straight out if your match sucked. <laughs> you should have done this. You s That's Lexi mm -hmm. for you. And and to someone who knows what women's wrestling is all about and what it should be, you cannot have asked for a better company to work mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. especially in Florida. <laughs> right, right. Uh, we needed so something. Many, so many perks. Like, I, I don't know why women were migrating to Florida all WWE of a sudden. WWE and TNA. Oh, gosh. Stop. I didn't care. Uh, I, I wanted to get away from the snow. Right? <laughs> and the cold weather. I have injuries. Right? It hurts. Um, I moved down for that. I, I didn't care about TNA or wrestling. I, I didn't move down to Florida for wrestling. I moved down because it was a job opportunity, mm -hmm. real life stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to get away from snow and cold. <laughs> I yeah. moved away for my personal reasons mm -hmm. and just so happened that, like, see... Opened up this company a year later after I was in Florida. Mm -hmm. But everyone migrates out of Florida because WWE's here and mm -hmm. TNA was here. Ridiculous. Land of opportunity. Okay. All right. She moved down for the weather. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tourist trap. <laughs> it's really what it is. It's great to visit. Don't move here. Gosh. We're, we're, we're going to vacation now. <laughs> gotta go down, we got to go all the way to Hawaii. Go to California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of, um, like, one of the perks of coming down to Shine, obviously you see all your friends, you get to work for this awesome promotion. Shine has an amazing atmosphere. Yes, it's family. Yeah, it, it's, it's so much fun. But I also thought of it, it's always like a mini vacation. Because <laughs> when, you, when you're coming from snow, you're coming you know, from the other side of the country, um, yep. you hop in that car, you get on that plane, you get down here and the weather's gorgeous. <laughs> and you're just like, Oh, I never want to leave. <laughs> and now it's time to go home and go back to you see what it is. You come a couple of days before a show, yeah. and you stay a couple of days and make a vacation oh, out of yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we always did. Like, we're going to the beach. <laughs> we're we're going to get all this stuff in. <laughs> <laughs> I think all the internationals comes like a week before. Mm -hmm. 
because they want to go to Universal. I know. Hit the beaches. Good for them. Get it. Get it. I know. Get it. I know. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you make those little memories mm-hmm. and these road trips and, you know, it, it's a good time no yeah. matter what. And Lexi always takes such good care yeah, of she all does. of us. Yeah, she she does. is so amazing. And that's just one of the, the things about working for a woman. I've always said that it's just so much easier working for a female boss in this business. They know what you're going through. They know what you're going through. They know what you need. They know how to make you feel a yep. little more comfortable. So it's, it's those little comforts a lot of the time. <laughs> Time that make the big difference. Yeah, you, you don't want to feel awkward in a locker room or, or awkward for your uh, your boss that you're working for because if he makes it awkward for you, you kind of just like eh. <laughs> you don't want to give your all. Yeah, and, and you kind of you don't uh, how do I say you're not open. You kind of just say whatever. Eh, okay, I'll do what you want. Mm-hmm. Whereas with Lexi, if you don't like something, you're like well, Lexi, you know, I really want to do this, mm-hmm. and and you kind of compromise because she knows what you're going through. She she knows what well, she knows how to get the most out of you because she is a woman. <laughs> she knows what women wrestlers are have to deal with and what they're faced with and she knows how to make them perform. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, working for Lexi is awesome. <laughs> Highly recommended. Highly recommended. But, you know, and now here she is in a position to train people. Uh, yes. You know, I think that's incredible. I think anytime you can put your hands on somebody who wants to learn and give an opportunity to learn and then she runs shows hey (laughs) hey we're gonna throw you out there now I mean Lexi has been such an integral part of my life I mean she scooped me up and was like here baby bird (laughs) (laughs) it's gonna be okay there's nobody out here there's nobody there's nowhere to go I don't know we got you girl we got you it's gonna be okay What's left to do? There's nothing left. Is there nothing left? Really? Have you done it all? I think I've done it all. I think um, I'm getting to the point where I'm content. Yeah. Um, WWE, eh, I don't yeah. care. Day, eh, whatever. Yeah. Um, I've been to Japan. I've been to Alaska. I've been to Australia. I've been to England. I mean, I've been to places that I've dreamed of that only people can dream of. I mean, what is love? Is there for me to do? I won championships in major companies and. I've also names that people can only dream of working. There is nothing left. And, and you know, I'm not going to say retirement or anything, um, but it's going to come to the point where my body is going to say, I'm done. And I can walk away and say, I'm happy. Mm-hmm. I did what I had to do, and I helped pave the way for girls to make a name for themselves. I mean, I think people like me, Sarah Their Ray, Lexi, Malaya, Cindy Rogers, um, there's so many names, Leah Littlefeather, paved the way for people like Jessica Havoc, mm-hmm. um, the Marty Bells, um, you know, the view for goodness sakes. I mean, we paved the way for all the new girls to come. Lufisto, who, who is so deserving of more credit than what she deserves. She, I, somebody like that who, who worked so hard that now is getting the credit, those are the people that you have to look up to because we worked our asses off to make the way for the Shannas and the Marty Bells and, and whoever else is out there. The Heidi Lovelaces. The Heidi Lovelaces and, and stuff. Because if it wasn't for, for you to work, people who've been in the business for so long can only just bring you up to that next mm-hmm. level. And for you to stay up there after we're gone is what we want to see. Um, after working like uh, Heidi and after working Evie from, you know, New Zealand and, and working Sue Young and these people who don't get the chance to get up to that level once they reach there mm-hmm. it's up to them mm-hmm. once we leave to stay up mm-hmm. there and give respect to the business please <laughs> and pull somebody through the door help them and help Turn them around um, and help somebody you else. know I want to walk away whenever I, I do decide to walk away knowing that I'm leaving women's wrestling in good hands and I know with Lexi running shine and, and Dave's running shimmer that it's left in good hands you know, because when the new crop comes in and the old crop kind of goes, you want to make sure that um, we don't make it come back to hurt somebody. Because <laughs> we'll come back. Um, <laughs> we'll come back. When I leave and I come back, I'm going to hurt somebody. <laughs> you don't be that first match. No, don't be that first match. <laughs> if, if I ever do leave. I don't know when it's going to happen at some point. After 14 years, what can you do? I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to reach 15, but mm-hmm. if I don't, who's, you know, <laughs> it's getting there. <laughs> 
Your 14's. body can only handle so much. 14 is a good number. Okay. Yeah. Don't be shit. No. I mean, if you can hit 15, heck, if you can hit 16. Malaya, I think, is at 21 or 22. Maybe she stopped wrestling. Then she comes Get back. Get out of here. You ain't leaving. You come back. She's Terry fucking us. Yeah. <laughs> she said she retired and then she shows up at a show in here. I know. We are tired. You never tired. <laughs> no. You gotta take a hiatus. That's cool. That's cool. Um, I'm so glad that I got to sit down and talk to you. <laughs> I really am. Is you're you're one of the women that I respect so much, oh, and you've done you. so much for so many people, and you've just I done try. so much for women's wrestling because you can tell that it's something that you truly love, and I love that because I love wrestling, I, especially women's wrestling. Um, I'm blessed. Blessed. We've been able to wrestle you on a few occasions. <laughs> oh. um, thank you for not killing me. <laughs> I don't kill anybody. I just don't need people it. to be at my level. Um, I, I try to say that, it, you know, I don't like to dummy myself up for someone in the ring. Mm -hmm. I, I like to be at my level, and, and some, they have to get there. And if I can elevate them, then I will. I don't like to put myself over over. Because I'm not one to, I don't have an ego. Never will, never have. I just, I am who I am, and I will help anybody get to that next level, no matter what. Um, if, if, if I have to dumb myself up too much, um, there's a problem. <laughs> um, but I, I think that uh, anybody that I work, if they can get to that next level with me and then go beyond it and put me and, and raise my stakes, I guess you can say, uh, like when I wrestle jazz, I mean, it's. I'm here and she's here. If I can get to her level, regardless if she's a friend or not, it can only raise my stakes that much more and it makes me love it. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the point where I have a new girl and she's just, and I do this and, and want to kill her in the ring and I'm just like, I'm not doing this no more because you want to leave the business mm -hmm. because these girls aren't ready. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm content. I'm happy and I just hope that the new girls can respect that. <laughs> What? I think they do. Well, I think some of them do. Um, and eighty percent of them. Yeah, you know. 18. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as there are people like you around who are willing to help, yeah, who are always, willing to always. keep things going and keep that standard high, and also that level of respect. Yeah, I think women's wrestling is going to be all right. I hope so. <laughs> is there anything that you want to tell fans or 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 say or want people to know or or anything? Before we go, um, no, no, I, <laughs> I think when it, you know I, I do so many interviews and, and stuff and it's the same stuff mostly all the time. I just think that you know support women's wrestling. I, I think we've come so far from when I first started to where I am now that women's wrestling it, is the mainstay. Um, it is oversaturated, of course, but still support us. Um, if you want to see certain matches, get those matches out there. Um, you know, get your veterans involved. Uh, the new, the new, support your newcomers. Um, don't make them get a big head. <laughs> um, what I like to say, not just the fans, um, just support, support, and support. Um, the only reason why we're here and the only reason why I keep wrestling is because of the fans. Uh, my body could be broken like it is now, um, but we do it because we love it. And uh, just give us the respect. That's all, that's all I ever want is respect. And for all the girls that I wrestled and, and continue to wrestle, I want their respect as well. You know, I don't got a big head. <laughs> I stay low key. Yeah, you do. And just respect my privacy. <laughs> That's it. Don't. My privacy. Yeah. I'm very low key. Don't yeah. bother me. Don't bother her. <laughs> Leave her alone. Uh, That's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. This oh, is a lot of fun. Welcome. This is a lot of fun. And I think a lot of people are going to enjoy your story. I think. <laughs> We all have a story to tell, oh, story. and it's always interesting to hear how we got to this point. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to this point out of chance. I got to this point out of luck. I think uh, this was the path I was supposed to take for a reason, and I don't still don't know what that reason it is, but there's there's a reason for everything, mm -hmm. and, and God led me to path of wrestling, and you know, one day I'm not going to be here, and then I want to say, hey, that's the reason why I was here, it's for wrestling only. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Wrestling. Yay. Wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I'm going to sign off. I want to thank everybody for joining us on this awesome episode of Diva Diaries. Thank you for coming, girl. Thank you thank so you much. Thank you for staying up, right? <laughs> All right. I know. Because now we can get some food. You can go to, you can go to bed now. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for joining us, and I will talk to all of you very, very soon.